Well, good morning, all. It's good uh, to have you join with us here in this online service uh, from Glendermit Presbyterian uh, this Sunday again. Uh, whether you're with us uh, on Facebook, on YouTube, whether you've joined with us at a later stage on Drive 105, it's really good uh, to have you all with us. If you're joining with us the first time, uh, you're especially welcome. If you're not one of our normal congregation but have tuned in to us, uh, it's good uh, to have you with us. And we do trust uh, that we will all know God's blessing as we meet uh, to worship Him uh, together here uh, today. Just a, a few things by way of announcement uh, before we begin uh, our service together. Um, I mentioned last week that we're going to have a congregational committee meeting uh, this Monday night um, at 7.30 p.m. Uh, the meeting ID should be coming up on the screen uh, in a moment or two. Um, I'll, I'll read it out uh, and it should come up. It will be on, on the Facebook page uh, at a point as well. So the meeting ID is 881-7518-0116. And you'll not need a password or anything for that. Just put uh, the meeting ID in and join the meeting. And then you'll come into a, a waiting room. And uh, I'll decide whether you can come into the meeting or not after that. Um, but just come uh, and join us. Any available, if there's somebody you, you know uh, could uh, and should be there, pass it on to them. If somebody needs help uh, sorting out with Zoom, uh, let us know and, and we'll try it. It's the first we experiment uh, with Zoom, uh, but I think it's good uh, that we give it a, a go. Whilst we are uh, permitted uh, to be open for charity collection uh, and so on, uh, we have been doing on, on Tuesday evenings, uh, the overriding message, of course, at the minute uh, is to stay home and to stay safe. Uh, and whilst we are thankful that uh, the R number is, is going down and the restrictions that are in place uh, seem to be working, uh, we're going to review that week on week. So this Tuesday night, uh, they will, the church will not be open uh, for collection. But if you are out and about uh, for some other reason, if there is uh, some goods that you want to, to leave off uh, for our charity collection, uh, please feel free uh, to call up to the manse and drop them off there, uh, and we'll make sure they get uh, to the right place. Sunday school packs uh, should have been delivered to you by now. Um, if you haven't received one, and normally do receive one, uh, give us a call or send us a wee message, and we'll make sure that one uh, makes its way out to you. If you know a young person who doesn't normally come to Sunday school, uh, someone who might benefit uh, from that material, uh, and would like to join in with our Sunday school, please uh, let us know as well, and we can uh, make sure uh, that they get one as well. I know the sun senior Sunday school uh, is recommencing uh, this Sunday again at 2.30 via Zoom, uh, those details. Uh, will be up on the Facebook page uh, before that point, half two uh, this afternoon, uh, and the, the Zoom details will be on the Facebook page. You gave me an announcement on the way in, didn't you? Yeah. The word for today, I didn't get writing it down, sorry, Rebecca. The word for today uh, is available in the church here, uh, if you normally get one. I'll take them to the manse with me, and you can call and get them like we did during the last lockdown and you can collect them from the manse, or we'll find some way to get them out to you. If you don't normally take one and would like one, again, just call up, uh, and we can provide you with one. It's a good um, medium to, to be using uh, to guide you in your daily readings and, and daily devotional thoughts, so I encourage you uh, to think about uh, taking one and, and using that. Last announcement is uh, an announcement of sadness. It is with sadness we announce uh, the death of another one of our members uh, last week. Mr. Kenneth Boyd uh, from Hartness Garden sadly passed away on Tuesday morning. His funeral service was here in our graveyard on Thursday uh, at lunchtime. Uh, can I encourage you, as we will be doing in our time of intercessory prayer, uh, to remember the family uh, at this difficult time. I remember his wife Betty and his daughters uh, Lucinda, Hillary, and uh, Melissa, in your prayers. As we know, uh, in these days, uh, with restrictions and so on in funerals, things are, are a lot more difficult uh, than they usually are. So please uh, remember that family in, in your prayers uh, in these times. As we come uh, to worship, uh, I, I want to read a few verses uh, from Second Corinthians 4. Um, we know we are in, in difficult times, uh, and it's times of worry and anxiousness, and sometimes uh, this uh, lockdown and these restrictions never seem to end. We, we go from one uh, to another, but 
I suppose these words are, are to encourage us uh, that I think there's a, a common saying is that this too shall pass, often attributed as a biblical phrase, but of course it is not. But of course that thought uh, is a, a biblical thought. If I, I read you a few verses from 2 Corinthians 4, as Paul speaks to the church in Corinth uh, about their weaknesses and their troubles and trials, he says this, he says, For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. We fix our eyes on Jesus. These difficult times that we live in will pass uh, and we Thank God and praise God that he is there uh, to, to help us through uh, these difficult times until we come out to the other side. We're going to keep that thought in mind as we come to our first piece of praise together. Are we going to stand? Are we going to sing? Um, hear the call of the kingdom and it reminds us to lift our eyes, lift our eyes to God uh, for the help that we need. So let's join and worship together. Uh, we're going to stand here. If you want to stand at home uh, and sing with us, that would be good as well. I want to encourage you uh, to lift your voice uh, as well as your mind and your soul to God and worship. Let's worship God together. Hear the call of the kingdom. Lift your eyes to the King. here. Thank you for coming and recording with us here uh, today. We really do appreciate uh, your ministry with us. And of course, thank you to uh, our men at the back as well, uh, recording this service for us. But let's just come uh, to God in prayer uh, together. Let's uh, commit our time of worship to him. Let's pray together. Let, let's pray. Our Father God, as we gather in what are really strange and, and different circumstances for us, Yes, we want to thank you that 
we can still meet and we can still enjoy worship, even though it's very different than what we're used to. But we thank you, Father, for the reminder in those words of praise about with that blessing of lifting our eyes to you, our King. And in your mercy, you call us to be children of light. You call us to be your children, to be part of your family. So what an amazing and awesome privilege it is for us to, to come even at the outset of our service as we bow in prayer now and even utter those two simple words to begin our prayer. Our Father God, to know that we're able to come not just in some, to some distant imaginary being who's completely detached from us, who's completely detached from uh, the situation and circumstances that we find ourselves in, but to come and to bow and to worship our all-knowing, our all-seeing, and our all-loving Father in heaven. Father, we thank you for the love that you have for each and every one of us that allows us to even approach your mighty throne of grace with joy, with worship and with wonder, knowing that we can find rest and help in your almighty presence. Father, we thank you for your love, for your grace, for your mercy that you've made plainly clear to us through the life, the death and the the glorious resurrection of Jesus a life and a a sacrifice that encapsulates all that you are and all that you want for your people. Indeed, an amazing love and grace that when we embrace it in our lives, yes, adopts us into your family as brothers and sisters of the Lord Jesus. That means we're no longer spiritual orphans in this world, but regenerated and renewed members of your family. Father, we want to thank you for your faithfulness to us. We thank you especially that even whilst we were still sinners, when we rejected you, you still sought us out and saved us. We want to thank you and praise you that in the midst of even the worst of life storms, you're there for us. You are that beacon of light in the darkness, leading us and drawing us into your presence where we can find rest and shelter from the storm. And yet even as we bow in awe and humility here and now, astonished at what you've done for us and what we mean to you, Father, we have to confess that instead of living lives, looking to you and knowing those truths in our hearts that turn us to you. We so often go off in our our own direction. So often prefer our own ways and our own notions rather than seeking you, seeking your help and your will in each of our lives. Father, we thank you that you are a forgiving God. And in spite of those times when we turn away from you, those times when we fall short, those times, yes, when we look to ourselves, Lord, we know that we can come back to you and know the joy of your forgiveness. So, Father, as we bow before you here today, Lord, our simple prayer would be that you would lift us up in your love, that you would sustain us by your grace, that we would know the comfort of your presence as we look to you and to you alone. And so we commit this time of worship to you. Help us to lift our eyes now to the King as we worship together or we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to watch a a little video now, uh, a short message from uh, George Walker, our our clerk of station. So I'm going to hand over to George. I want to thank him for recording uh, this little message, uh, which should come on your screens in a moment or two. Uh, Thank you, George. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to thank Stephen for allowing me to come on and speak to you today just from 
the, the church. We'd just like to welcome everyone to our service here. And again, we know we'd like to meet in circumstances where we're face to face. And again, we have that fellowship together. But again, this is the, the next best thing. And it's great that, that Stephen and, and the guys in, on the sound desk are able to provide the technology that we have got here for to, uh, to bring the service online. Uh, it's a difficult time as we as we are going through it. Uh, we're now advised to stay safe and stay at home. But again, remember though, if you are out, uh, the social distancing and also the hand washing, which is very, very important. It's really what got us through the first bit of this pandemic and we almost had it eradicated way back in the early summer. But again, unfortunately, uh, we got another wave of it. So it's important that that we continue on with the hand washing and social distancing as well, well as wearing your mask when you're asked to wear it inside in shops and so on. We have unfortunately lost a few of our members due to COVID-19 and it's important that we remember the families at this time. Another thing that we've, we've been blessed with within our church is the refurbishment project and as part of the fundraising for that project I felt it would be important maybe to reiterate one of the, the ideas that we had last year, which was a birthday sacrifice. It meant that whenever it come around to your birthday, instead of receiving gifts from people who normally would give you gifts, that you dropped a wee hint to them that this time I'm going to look for to give some money to the church. And if you would like to, instead of giving me a gift, provide some, some money, I'll put it in an envelope and pass it on then to the church. And we had a few people did that last year and again it, it sort of built a wee bit of momentum and then fizzled out but this year i think we, we we may look to do that again in fact we are going to do it again we've already had one person's birthday in the early part of january who has passed on her birthday sacrifice to ourselves so if you're minded to do that please just remember the church at this time and ensure that the the church is, is benefiting both prayerfully and financially as we move forward because I'm sure all of will agree that the job that has been done in the church has been excellent and deserve everybody deserves credit who's been involved in that. So again, please stay safe and God bless you all. Thank you. George, thank you uh, for your message uh, and uh, we do uh, thank you for coming on and taking the time to, to record that message as we can't uh, meet together uh, and to worship together as we would normally do. We're going to turn to God's Word uh, together now. If you have your Bible handy at home, uh, that would be good. Uh, and let's open it up and read God's Word uh, together. If not, the words should be coming up on your screen. Uh, you'll know back, and we'll mention it uh, later on, we have been going through a series of teaching from the, the Sermon on the Mount, and we had reached a critical point where Jesus begins his teaching on prayer. And so we're going to continue into that now. We're going to turn our attention primarily to uh, the words of the Lord's Prayer and think through that uh, together over the next few weeks. Uh, but let's turn uh, to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, uh, and let's read it together. It's Matthew chapter 5, reading from verse 5, a teaching on prayer. This is God's Word to us. Let's read it uh, together. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. We end our reading there 
and do trust that as we turn to that uh, together uh, in a short time uh, that God will uh, indeed speak to us. I want to take a moment or two now uh, to speak to our young people. Uh, I do trust uh, you have gathered around with uh, your family around uh, this service, uh, whether that's on your TV, computer, or whatever. So it's good for us uh, to take a few moments uh, together uh, with you. I'm going to just slip off to the side a wee moment here. I have a couple of things I want to bring out uh, to the middle, uh, and then we'll have a little chat with you. Just give me two seconds, uh, and we'll go and get these. I should have got a couple of lovely assistants to help me with these, couldn't, shouldn't I? Don't want to put it in front of you, then nobody would see you. These are a few new additions to our church. Does anybody know what they are? It's fairly obvious what they are, isn't it? One is our hand sanitizer. We are encouraged in, in these days to, to keep washing our hands, to keep sanitizing our hands. When we come into church, this is what you're going to see now. And you're going to just put your hand in underneath it. Oh, I thought for a moment there it wasn't going to work. And we get our hand sanitizer. And look at that. My hands are lovely and clean. Think should we give it another wee blast just to check it is working? Oh, there. I'm, I love being clean now. Anybody else want to wash their hands while they're here? No? No. There we are. That's my hands lovely and clean. So I'm lovely and clean. But what about the church around us? Well, that's what this boy's for here. Now, this is a special tool for, for Herbie to use after we have finished in our church when we're, we're meeting together again. And it's called a fogging machine. It's not what I had imagined a fogging machine to be, but... This, again, is something which will help clean our church. Let me see if I get it right. Herbie doesn't know I have it, so I don't know what I'll be telling him now. I think it's going to be fairly obvious he's going to see me here. So let me see it blowing up my hand. Oh, like a hoover. What's going to happen? Oh, there we are. Look at that there. I'll not spray it towards the people. Try to shut it off again. Anybody get any of that? No. I tried not to spray you with it. Isn't that, isn't that an amazing machine? Nobody's going to comment on it. They're not talking to me at all. I'm really looking forward to the day when you can join me back in this church again. And you can give me some answers. Uh, because they're not doing very well here today, are they? Hand sanitizer keeps us lovely and clean. My hands are perfectly clean and sanitized. Spray the whole church with this thing. The whole thing is clean and it's sanitized and we don't have to worry about germs and we don't have to worry about uh, this coronavirus or anything like that there. These things kill all of that. They keep everything so clean on the outside. And that's what I want to think about today. We're going to be thinking about, when we turn to the Bible, we're going to be thinking about coming to know God as our Father. Coming to know God as our Savior. Coming to ask Jesus into our lives and know that wonder and joy of salvation. Because, you see, all the sanitizer in the world and all the disinfectant in our fogging machine is all brilliant. But it's all superficial. Even if I spray the whole church with that fogging machine, it just falls on the outside of things. But in underneath, there could still be something lurking. And in underneath of us, if I want to put it that way, in our hearts, lurking in our hearts, is sin. The Bible tells us we all have sinned. We all fall short of what God expects of us. But we can be clean inside. Just like we clean ourselves on the outside, we can be clean on the inside when we ask Jesus to save us. When we ask Jesus to be our Savior and to be Lord in our lives. And that goes for older people watching as well. It's not just about the young people here. Because we sin each and every day. We do wrong things each and every day. But God loves us so much that he sent Jesus into this world to die for our sins, that when we believe and trust in him, that we are cleaned inside, we are forgiven, we are washed as 
one of the hymns we're going to sing later on, we are washed in the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all of our sin. We don't need hand sanitizer. We don't need fogging machines. We don't need any of those sort of things. What we need in life is Jesus and nothing but Jesus. We're going to sing together in a moment, but we're going to sing about God's love. We're going to sing about being overwhelmed by his love in a moment or two. But let me just, let me just pray with you uh, before we, we come uh, to sing. Let's just pray uh, specifically for, for our young people. Uh, let's join in prayer together. Father, we, we thank you, yes, for all these wonderful things that keep us clean on the outside. We thank you for the likes of these sanitizing machines and these fogging machines that keep us safe here in church when we gather together. There's so much out there that protects us and cleanses us on the outside. But Father, whether we are young children, whether we are adults, or we know that we are born with sin in our hearts, there is that sin lurking inside of us. And there's only one thing can cleanse us, and that is Jesus. Father, we want to thank you once again for Jesus. We want to thank you uh, for your love that sent Jesus into this world. And yes, as we're going to sing in a moment, we are overwhelmed that you loved us so much that you would send Jesus to forgive us. That we might know him as our Savior, that we might know him as Lord of our lives. Father, we just pray for all our young people. Lord, we know they find themselves in a, a very different place even in these days. Lord, we don't have Sunday school. We don't have them coming to church the same as we used to. We don't interact the same as we used to. But Father, we know that salvation is of you. And Lord, we pray that you would speak into each of their young hearts. Or draw them to yourself, whatever age they might be. Lord, will we pray for them. We pray for any of the older folk watching this, or who don't yet, don't yet know you as, as their Lord and Savior. And we pray that you would and they'd speak to them too. Lord, we thank you for the relationship we have with you because of your love for us. So, Father, bless us now as we seek to bless you as we sing the song together. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we are we're going to join together uh, in our next piece of praise. Overwhelmed by love, deeper than oceans, high as the heavens, ever living God, your love has rescued me. Uh, let's worship God together.
join in prayer together once again. How we're going to unite our hearts and our minds together as we we come to God in prayer. As I always do, I encourage you uh, as God speaks to you, as God brings those people and those situations to your mind, uh, to take time and to bring them uh, to God in prayer. But allow me uh, to lead you in this time uh, first and foremost. Let's come to God in prayer. Let's, let's pray. Our Father God, we come once again thankful for this opportunity to come and to approach your throne of grace, to intercede for the needs of others, Lord. Your word continually tells us that we're to come to you in prayer and to find that, uh, that solace and that help that we need as we face the different situations in life. And Father, we thank you. Yes, we thank you even from the outset that all of these different situations that we, that we pray for, all of those situations that you bring to our minds, Lord, you already know them. But Lord, it pleases you when your people come uh, and pray to you. And so, Lord, guide us in this time of prayer as we think about these different situations. And Father, we want to pray, uh, obviously, for this ongoing lockdown that we find ourselves in. Lord, you know we would love to see an end to it, but Father, we thank you uh, that, well, there is a reduction in the R number, or become so thankful that the the restrictions that have been put in place do seem to be having some effect. Yes, it does cause a lot of inconvenience. Yes, we would love to be joining together in worship here, but can't at the minute, but Father, we thank you for the impact that that is having in our community around us. And Lord, we pray that that would continue. Lord, whilst we are thankful for a reduction in that R number, Lord, we pray for a reduction that we would see a, a real reduction in hospital admissions and, and certainly in deaths by this COVID-19. Father, we know it has devastated many lives or many known to us and so many unknown to us. But Lord, we bring them before you in prayer. Lord, we want to pray for all in health and social care. Pray for our doctors, our nurses, for our care workers as, or as they give of their time and talents that have been given by you to, to help people recover from the virus, to help people keep safe. I want to pray for those, yes, who have been directly impacted by the virus. We pray for healing for them. We pray for recovery. We pray for your strength and your help in the midst of this most difficult time. Lord, yes, as we have prayed for a reduction in deaths, Lord, we pray for those who have been bereaved during this pandemic. Lord, you know, with all the, the different restrictions, all the things that are in place, reduction in numbers and all the rest of it, the, the grieving process is so much more difficult. But Lord, we know that whilst we, we maybe can't seem to support each other and help each other at these difficult times, Lord, we know that, that you are there again to find that help and strength to, to see these families through this. And yes, we want to pray, especially for the Boyd family here today. I want to pray for Kenneth's wife, Betty. Pray for his daughters, Lucinda. For Hillary and Melissa, we pray for the, the whole family circle. Lord, that in these difficult days, they would know something of your comfort and peace. Father, we thank you for Kenneth's life, for what he meant to each one in that family, for what he meant to each one who knew him and loved him as, yes, a husband, a father, a brother, a friend. We thank you for the memories that each will have of him. And Lord, we pray that those memories would help them, uplift them in these difficult days. But yes, ultimately, we pray that they would turn to you for the greatest help they can receive. Lord, your word tells us that you are our rock, that you are our refuge and strength, our ever-present help in trouble. And Lord, we pray that they would know that help, that refuge and that strength. Lord, we want to pray for our children once again. 
We're going to pray for them with so much uncertainty about schools. Or we don't know when things will get back to normal for them either. And Lord, if we find these situations confusing and anxious, Lord, surely they do too. Lord, we want to pray for parents as they juggle the, the life and work balance along with homeschooling. Or we thank you for the, the mediums that have been made available to parents to help them, but or we, we know it's not an easy thing uh, to juggle all these things, but Lord, we pray for your help there. We pray for the teachers as they prepare uh, for these lessons. We want to pray for our Sunday school teachers as they prepare lessons for our young people. As they deliver teaching on, on Zoom and so on. And we thank you for their willingness to, to teach our young people about you. To teach them the truths about your word. And Lord, we pray that you would bless them as they seek to serve you in this way and in a very different environment uh, to their used to. And Father, you know, as we say, you know our hearts. You know there as much more we could pray for here today. But Lord, we pray as always that and we would know something of your goodness into each of those situations in our lives. But Lord, for all things that we have prayed for, spoken here, and those things that you have spoken into our hearts about, or believe with you confidently, again knowing that you know each of our situations and we know and have that assurance that you hear our prayers because we bring them in and through the name of your Son and our Saviour Jesus. Amen. Amen. I need to juggle my paper a wee bit here. Uh, as I intimated when we had our, our Bible reading, um, we said back at the start of December when we looked at Jesus' introduction to uh, this teaching on prayer, uh, there were quite a number of things that we, we thought about in response to that a request from Jesus. And of course, the, the, the thing that many of us can associate with uh, as well, uh, that simple request from uh, the disciples, Lord, will you teach us to pray? That deep desire uh, to learn more uh, and connect deeper uh, with Jesus. I remember back then as we started our talk, uh, issuing that challenge that if there was ever a time in our history where the church needs to get on its knees and pray, certainly this current crisis uh, we're in speaks to us in that, if not shouts into our lives to do just that, to get on our knees and pray. As we find ourselves in the midst of another lockdown, Maybe we do need to hear that call of God again that's recorded for us in First Chronicles that we read back then at the beginning of December as well. If my people, you're called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Prayer, friends, is important. Prayer is key to our faith. Prayer is key to our relationship with God. Yet, as we all know, and as we would probably confess, each and every one of us, it's probably one of the most neglected things in the modern day disciple's life. But I hope we picked up from that introduction back those few weeks ago that the reality is that prayer is something that is compulsory for disciples of Jesus. It's all about developing and, and deepening our relationship with God. It is essential to who we are and what we are if we claim to be followers and disciples of Jesus. Just like all of the teaching we've looked at so far in Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, uh, the teaching on prayer follows a very logical order. Uh, and we're going to follow that order as we, as we look through uh, this different teaching. But as a bit of a recap to, to take us back 
Uh, just to that little introduction before he goes into the, the prayer itself, uh, we need a reminder maybe. First, we had those warnings uh, that we looked at the last time. We were reminded that when we pray, not if, when we pray, when we pray, there are a number of things we need to keep in mind. Things that are essential to that natural assumption that each and every one of us uh, does in our life as a disciple. There is that first call, as we've said, that we do actually pray. As believers and disciples of Jesus, it is something that we do. That's what Jesus starts with, that we must pray. It's what we do and what we should be doing. But then, of course, there were the real warnings that when we actually do commit ourselves to humbling ourselves and opening ourselves up to God in that place of prayer, there are a number of things that we were reminded about, about what prayer is and what prayer isn't. It shouldn't be in, in any way pretentious or, or repetitious, if you remember back to then. We should never pray just to be seen by others like the Pharisees did in those days. We're not supposed to just chant or repeat meaningless prayers or, or mantras like the pagans did. And of course, sadly, there was the recognition that as some would say that the Lord's Prayer is one of the most babbled prayers or, or mantras about these days. I remember repeating a phrase from Philip Reichen, the senior pastor in 10th Presbyterian in Philadelphia, where he aptly put it, he said, that there is a difference in saying the Lord's Prayer and praying the Lord's Prayer. It's worth thinking about that, isn't it? There is a difference in saying the Lord's Prayer and praying the Lord's Prayer. And so I want to delve deeper into this specific teaching on prayer over the next few weeks so that we know the difference. So we can tell the difference in simply whether we're just saying it or whether we're actually praying what Jesus has taught us. So after all those warnings, Jesus moves on and begins to teach the disciples this pattern or, or skeleton prayer to help them. To help them and to help us to pray more effectively, more efficiently, and more purposefully. Nearly said that right, didn't I? More purposefully. Jesus says, when you pray, this is how you should pray. When you pray, this is how you should pray. And I believe that's important. And that's why I'm emphasizing it. Jesus says he's going to teach us how we should pray, not what we should pray. I know for some that might seem like we're being very specific or, or very picky with our words, but uh, as I hope we've, we've noticed before, and this is no different, the Bible is the er errant word of God. It always uses, God always uses very specific words for very specific reasons. That's why Jesus ties this in with the teaching on hypocritical prayers and the vain repetitions of the pagans so that we know how to pray to stop us from doing exactly the same as they do. And so the prayer begins, when you pray, this is how you should pray. And he begins the prayer, our Father in heaven. And that's the thing we're going to be looking at today. I think it's interesting that Philip Reichen says that the hypocrite and the pagan pray the way they do is because they're orphans. They pray the way they do because they aren't sure whether their gods would even hear them. When the Greeks and Romans prayed, they began their prayers by reciting this long list of names of all these different gods that they worshipped. And they done that simply hoping that at least one of them might hear their prayer. Since their gods weren't all-seeing, all-knowing, and all-loving, the people had no sense of a relationship with the gods. So they were never sure whether they'd get an answer or not on which God it would come from. And that's the key to any prayer. This is the key to any prayer and praying the Jesus way. 
is knowing that you're coming to speak to a God who knows all about you. We've mentioned it already a number of times in this service. We know when we come to God, we are speaking to a God who knows all about us, who sees all our worries and all our struggles, and loves us unconditionally, in spite of ourselves, as we would say. So our prayers, and this Lord's Prayer, naturally start the way they do by directing us all to that all-knowing, all-seeing, and all-loving God, our Father in heaven. And of course, that's the simple, and as I often say, that the not-so-simple thing that we're going to be looking at today. The prayer begins, our Father in heaven. But did you ever really stop to think about what that actually means? when we pray when you or I start our prayer with that simple our father in heaven father or father God as I often do did you ever really pause and think about the depth of meaning that that really has it's a bit like this whole prayer this Lord's prayer we can become so familiar with the words that we pass over them too quickly we feel to see how fundamental and important that they are and that's why I'm saying it's simple yet not so simple for Jesus to teach the disciples and us to start our prayer with such simplicity and such familiarity with those carefully chosen words Abba Father well, certainly back then, that was about as radical as it could be. The Jews had always been very careful about how they addressed God. They refused to address God personally. They would never, ever say his personal name, Yahweh, in case it offended God in any way. That's why we have words like Jehovah. Because since the Hebrew had no written vowels, they would change the vowels uh, to make them into another name. Jehovah, rather than God's real name, Yahweh. If you want to look it up, the main characters are the same, the vowels are different. That's why we have two different names. If you're interested, nobody in the entire Old Testament ever directly calls God their father. Never. So to call him your father was, was radical. God has only ever referred to his father 14 times in the whole of the Old Testament. He's referred to as the father of Israel in terms of the nation, but he is never addressed as a father in any personal sense or directly in prayer. Yet in comparison, Jesus calls God as father some 66 times in the Gospels. And he does it every time he comes to God in prayer. Well, except for that one agonizing prayer on the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But then he goes back to his father in his final words, doesn't he, Father? Into your hands I commit my spirit. Calling God by this familiar name, Abba or Father, was at the very heart of Jesus' prayer life. And it was radical and startling. This was a completely new development in the history of prayer. There is no record to say of anyone else ever having addressed God in such a familiar way. So who did this Jesus think he was calling God his father? Can you imagine the Jews as Jesus begins to pray and he calls God their father? Who does he think he is? Well, he knew exactly who he was. He was the eternal son of God. So when he spoke about God and talked to God in prayer, he naturally said, Abba, Father. Father. He spoke to God as his father. He addressed God in a way nobody else would even dare. So the way Jesus talked about and to God was remarkable. But friends, what is even more remarkable is that he's made that exact same thing possible for you and I. We can pray in exactly the same way. We can be radical and startling too. 
We can come to this almighty God, the God who created the universe and everything in it. This all-powerful, sovereign God, this God who is holy, righteous, and just. This God who is merciful, forgiving, gracious, and loving, and we can call him our Father. Radical? Yes. Remarkable? Absolutely. As a Christian, you can come to God in exactly the same way that Jesus did. Isn't that remarkable? You can come to God as a child speaking to a loving Father. And I add that on purpose in the same way I did when we began this teaching on prayer the last time. As a Christian, you can come and talk to God in exactly the same way Jesus did. As a Christian, you can talk to God personally and intimately. Jesus invites us and teaches us that we, that we have that glorious privilege of knowing God as our Father and talking to him in prayer when we are his children. That's an important thing. When we are God's children. And I want to be very specific about that. I used to work with a guy who, well, I'm sure you know people like him. And he used to say, and no matter what I said to him, you get this reply, sure, we're all God's children. You've heard it before, haven't you? We're all God's children, but we are not, friends. We are not all God's children, naturally. The Bible teaches us that we are all God's creation. That's very different. And yes, so in a sense, we are kind of all God's offspring. But only those who have been saved and redeemed are truly his children, members of his family, and can call him father. Outside of salvation through Jesus, the Bible says that we are objects of wrath. Outside of salvation through Jesus, the Bible says we are children of the devil. We are not naturally all God's children, but by God's incredible grace, Christians are reborn and adopted into the family of God. To all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. That's what scripture says. To all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to be children of God then you can enjoy the, the wonderful benefits enjoyed by all children of God. We can enjoy the tender love and compassion of our Father who provides for all our daily needs. We can enjoy the love and compassion of our Father who pardons our sins, who protects us from harm, who showers us with daily blessings. We can enjoy the indwelling of the Spirit who helps us and guides us each and every day that we live for Jesus. Each and every day that we grow like Jesus and we serve God in and through the body of Christ, the church. We enjoy the comfort and support of the rest of the family as, well, as Scripture says, we are devoted to one another in brotherly love. We enjoy a secure inheritance for the future, heirs of God and co-heirs with Jesus of true life and eternity. We enjoy God as our Father. Friends, let me be clear. Only by trusting in Jesus to save you from sin and death are you born again as a child of God and adopted into his family. So it's fairly simple. Until that happens, you can't properly pray the Lord's Prayer. Because it is impossible to call God Abba Father unless you're a child of God through faith in Jesus. In fact, the early church didn't even allow visitors to pray the Lord's Prayer because they recognized that simple fact. So to finish today, I want to ask the same question I did at the, t at the end of our talk, the, the last time when we began this series. Will you join with us? Will you join with those of us who enjoy the richness and privileges 
of praying the Lord's Prayer and not just saying the Lord's Prayer. Before we go any further thinking about this Lord's Prayer, will you pray that first and most important prayer? God, forgive me for my sin. Forgive me for my disobedience and I accept Jesus as Lord and Savior in my life. Because, friend, without that first prayer, accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior, without being adopted into God's family, well, I'm sorry to be the one to break this to you. The rest of the Lord's Prayer, the rest of whatever prayer you pray, is completely and utterly meaningless. Without having prayed that first prayer, asking for forgiveness, anything else is meaningless. And you will definitely just be saying it and not praying it. When you pray, Jesus says, come to your Father. Abba, Father. Come as a child of God in confidence in the knowledge that you know the joy of salvation through him. Let us pray together. Let's pray. Let's pray. Abba, Father, our Father in heaven, Father God, Lord, we thank you for the wonder and the joy that it is to approach you as as our Father in heaven, to know that we come to that almighty God. God who created everything, the God who knows everything, the God who sees everything. And yet the God who is intimately interested in each and every one of us. And yes, Lord, our prayer today is specifically for those who don't yet know that joy and assurance of knowing God as their Father. Lord, we pray that even today that they would pray that simple prayer, God, forgive me for my sin. Forgive me for those times when I have been disobedient. I've looked to myself rather than you when I've sought salvation through my own means. And I've tried to earn your salvation here. God, forgive me. I accept Jesus as Lord and Savior in my life. Lord, as we prayed with our young people, we pray that you would stir people's hearts. Lord, as we face maybe what is some of the most desperate times many of us will ever have known. Lord, we want to to walk our way through these times knowing that comfort and assurance of being part of your family. So Father, speak to us. Or those of us who know you and love you, Lord, speak to us and bring us that sense of joy and comfort of knowing you. Remind us of that joy. And yet speak to those we don't know it. So we commit each and every one of us into your all-seeing and knowing care. And we do so in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to close our service with our last piece of praise. We're going to stand here and sing together again. I encourage you uh, to, to join with us and to sing even. It seems strange sitting at home. Please Join with us in a space as we sing uh, this last piece of praise. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Let's worship God together.
going to close now in the words of our God of love and light prayer. Let's join together as we always do and say this prayer together and I will close uh, with the words of the benediction. Can I thank you for joining with us in our service today and we do trust uh, that you will know God's blessing in the week ahead and we do look forward uh, to worshipping with you again uh, next week. But let's, let's close in prayer. God of love and light, in this time of fear, give us your peace. In this time of isolation, give us your presence. In this time of sickness, give us your healing. In this time of uncertainty, give us your wisdom. In this time of darkness, shine your light upon us all. In Jesus' name. We pray now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit would be with us all both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. See you next week, folks.